Church. It's Monday morning. Take your Bibles and let's start the week off with uh, Psalm 95. Psalm 95 is where we're going to be at today. And I love this Psalm. Uh, number one, it's praising God for his creative works. Uh, then it's praising God for his redemptive works in which he does. Then there's a warning to the rebellious. Uh, don't uh, allow your uh, rebellion to cause God to have to punish you. And that's the way it ends. God having to punish Israel because of her rebellion. Now, this was a psalm that was also sung uh, on the Sabbath day or was read on the Sabbath day to remind the people. And it's just a glorious psalm. Notice how it begins. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalm. And so to start off, he says, let us come together for worship and let us praise God and let's do it to the highest part of our voices and let's use the Psalms in order to praise God. And he says, why? For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. There are no gods besides him. He's the God who is the one and only. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. You can go to the very depths of the middle part of the earth and there you'll find God. Then it says, to the heights of the hills also. So to the highest place on earth, there God is. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Nowhere can you go that God does not rule and reign upon this earth. Verse number six. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the days of trial in the wilderness. And so they're worshiping God. Then they are reminded on this day that, listen, our forefathers, God redeemed them and brought them out. He did a redemptive act in their part, uh, for their part in the days of the Egyptian bondage. And he brought them out. He says, but listen, don't harden your heart against the Lord who created all things, who rules over all things, who is the God of Israel. Do not harden your heart as they did in the days of the rebellion when they would not go into the promised land. He says in verse number nine, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. They saw all the miracles, the plagues, all that God did, the Red Sea, the water from rock, the manna from heaven. They saw all the wonderful works of God, and yet they hardened their hearts and would not obey God. They tested the Lord. So therefore, he says in verse 10, for 40 years, I was grieved with that generation. And I said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts. They had a heart problem. They wouldn't obey. And they do not know my ways. It's not that they did not know what God told them to do. It's they rejected God's ways. They didn't want to go in the promised land. They didn't want to obey God. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And that generation did not. That was a, again, every Sabbath reminder that God created all things. So we need to worship him for his creative acts. God redeems us, and therefore we need to worship him because of his redemptive acts. But to always be warned, God will not tolerate rebellion. Do not test the Lord our God. Serve him. Make our hearts uh, his home and allow uh, our, our lives to be spent in his service. Let us pray together. Fathers, we begin this new week. We pray that you'll help us to be mindful of these things. That, Father, you have done so much for us, both creatively and redemptively. You have met every need. And so, Father, we bless you and we praise you. Help us now to go forth and to be obedient. You are the great shepherd and we are your sheep. We want to serve you. So help us to, to learn how to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.